Today, lasers are used in a wide range of medical settings. It is therefore important to understand the hazards that may occur with their use and the appropriate safety measures that should be taken. The general considerations for the safe use of medical lasers will be discussed in this course. First, a general understanding of lasers is required. A laser always contains three basic elements. A medium, an energy source, and an optical cavity. The medium, or gain medium, is a specific material which can be in either a solid, liquid, or gas form. The energy source, or pump, of a laser may be a chemical reaction, laser diode, flash lamp, or even another laser. The optical cavity, or optical resonator, is the container of the medium and has a fully reflective mirror on the one end and a partially reflective mirror on the other end. When the energy source is activated, energy is pumped into the optical cavity in the form of light energy, also known as photons. Upon collision with atoms of the medium in the optical cavity, the photons are absorbed by its electrons. This causes the atom's electrons to jump from a low-energy orbital state to a high-energy orbital state. Over time, some of the electrons in the high-energy state spontaneously return to their low-energy state, emitting the energy difference between the two states. This is known as spontaneous emission, resulting in a photon with both a random direction and phase. If such a photon collides with another atom with high-energy electrons, emission can occur, resulting in a second photon identical in direction, phase and energy level. This is known as stimulated emission. The energy level and wavelength of this photon are determined by the specific material used to form the medium and are therefore constant for all emitted photons. Due to the mirrors of the optical cavity, photons that are perfectly perpendicular to the mirrors can bounce back and forth between the two sides, gaining more photons over time due to stimulated emission. As one of the mirrors is only partially reflective, a small amount of the photons is allowed to escape the optical cavity, forming the usable laser light. This process gives laser its name. It is an acronym for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. The resulting laser light is almost completely monochromatic, meaning that only one wavelength is present. The photons of this light are also in phase, or coherent, and almost completely parallel to each other, or collimated. This light can be applied directly or via optical fibres to the intended area. This can, for example, be an eye. When the photons of the laser light come in contact with a material, different interactions are possible. Possible interactions are transmission, reflection and absorption. With transmission, the photons of the laser light are able to pass through a material. For example, transmission of visible light occurs with glass windows, allowing us to look through them. The opposite occurs with reflection. Here, the photons reflect on the surface of a smooth material and continue as a parallel beam of light. For example, reflection of light on a smooth surface occurs with mirrors, allowing us to clearly see the light being reflected. If the surface of the material is not too smooth, but rough, diffusion will occur. Here, the photons still reflect on the surface, but their direction is no longer parallel due to irregularities on the surface. As a result, the laser light reflects in various directions and is no longer concentrated to a powerful beam. This occurs with most objects surrounding us and allows us to observe these objects. With absorption, the photons of the laser light are absorbed by the material. This absorbed energy causes an increase in temperature in the exposed material. This occurs, for example, when sunlight reaches our skin, causing an increase in temperature.
Often, a combination of these interactions occurs, depending on the exposed material, the angle between laser and material surface, and the wavelength of the photons.